What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of the Realistic Career Mode. This is episode number 25. We start these of stuff with a look at the lead table as you can see on the back of our win over Sheffield United. Right now in 6th place, leapfrogging the Magpies and going into 6th. Uh, they're behind us in 7th on 60 points or a point clear of them. Now we are currently only behind Chelsea on goal difference. Uh, and with 5 points clear of Manchester United in 4th. So, you know, like... There is definitely a chance we could finish in the top four, but I said it before and I'll say it again. I'm I'm not thinking about it. Learn to walk before you run. I'm not thinking about the Champions League and the outside possibility of sneaking in on the final day. All I'm thinking about right now is the team in eighth place. Yep, that is Arsenal. We are currently six points clear and it means with three games to go, two wins or a win and a draw away at the Emirates means that we will qualify for a European competition of some sort. Most likely the Europa Conference League, but even so. So for the first game of our final three in the season, taking on Watford, the Hornets, another side that played the Zed Cars theme song when they come out at Vicarage Road. Taking on Watford, heading into this game, I thought, okay, all right, three games remain. We've got Watford, we've got Arsenal, and we've got Manchester United. Now, no disrespect to the Hornets, I mean, I think even Watford fans would probably say this. Out of those three games, this is the most winnable one. So taking a Watford away from home, this had to be a win. If I, if I didn't win this game, I have to say, I think we'd probably bottle Europe. So heading into the game, we needed to get a victory. And it was the perfect start. We'd started off with intensity. We'd looked a better team in the early stages. And Callum hudson Doy's 10th goal of the season gave us the lead. But this was ludicrous, man. Holding on to a one-goal lead, heading into the break. Look at this in the top left. I'm not playing the second half right now. This is still the first half. We are 53 minutes into the game, into the first half, I should say, when Jordan Pickford makes that great save at point blank range to still keep us leading. It's like we're back in Qatar watching the World Cup. Literally, there were 55 minutes played in the first half before the referee blew the whistle for the break. There were an additional nine minutes of added time when it was only supposed to be two. And there weren't any injuries. Nope, the referee just forgot to blow his whistle. He must have thought it was the second half. Even so, ridiculous. We held on, heading into the break, still leading by one. But it was a really nervy end to the first half. Watford had looked a better team towards the end of the first half. So I thought, okay, all right, I think I need a second goal. I think I need a second goal to settle my nerves. I decided to be brave, go on the offensive, look for it. And we got it. Yep, sometimes being brave, taking that risk turns out to be a great decision and you get the rewards for it. Connor Gallagher gets our second goal. 2-0, we win. That puts us into fifth. But then after Chelsea played their game in hand, that drops us back down to sixth. <laughs> so we're now eight points behind Man City in fourth and the top four has completely gone. But it did mean, heading into the following game, six points clear of Arsenal in eighth, where we sit in sixth right now. If we came to the Emirates and avoided defeat, we would be in either the Europa or Europa Conference League next season, guaranteed as the Gunners would not be able to catch up with a game to go. So even a draw would be enough. We might still drop to seventh, but sixth. Uh, sorry, yeah, we, we might still drop to seventh, but even so, that is still Europa Conference League. So... Taken on Arsenal, away from home. Big win there against Watford. Three wins in a row. And I thought, how do I approach this game? Do I be brave? Do I go for chances? Do I go for the win, even though we only need the point? Or do I just try and see out the point? You know, play for the nil-nil. Well, 30 minutes in after Pickford made a great save, I was absolutely fuming. I was on the touchline. Me and Arteta, former Everton man, of course, almost came to blows. Because I thought we should have had a penalty, man. But did he take him down? Nothing given. And then right before the break... Golden chance to take the lead. Trying to sweat it across the six-yard area of DCL towards Hudson and Doy. Aaron Ramsdale sticks out a leg and turns it behind. So at the break, we were tied at 0-0. Arsenal needed a win. This result will be good enough for us. And then after the restart, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh, this almost came off. Corner Gallagher gets the post, but what a decision. I almost caught the gunners napping with Van Ewitt going down the right there. Can't be offside from a throw in, of course. That almost worked out. Had we scored the goal there, I was sure we'd win it. Because in the second half, mate, I'm going to be totally honest here. This was housery. This was housery. <laughs> I'm 
mean, I don't care what anyone was going to say. I don't care what the articles are going to be on BBC Sport the following day. I don't care one bit. I was not prepared to surrender a chance for Arsenal in the second half. So I played walking football like it was over 50s at the local community centre. I literally banished myself from using the right trigger. The sprint button was not allowed. All I did was pass the ball around and keep it in the corner for the majority of the final half an hour. And in the end, I walked down the tunnel knowing those Arsenal fans weren't going to be very kind to me and say fair play for qualifying for Europe. No, they would have been fuming. I don't mind one bit. I walked down that tunnel and I said to the boys, OK, quickly applaud the Everton fans, then get down the tunnel. We're getting on the coach, we're heading back to Liverpool because we have just houseried a draw away at the Emirates Stadium. Is that a word? It is now houseried. We've houseried a draw at the Emirates Stadium. Or whilst it means our winning run ends after three... I did not care one bit. The point means that we have qualified for Europe. And it still meant on the final day we could drop to 7th place and finish in a Europa Conference League spot. Newcastle needed to win in 7th place right now. And there needed to be a little goal difference gap, uh, goal difference gap made up as well. And we had to either, uh, well, a draw. They can still do it on a goal difference. Or if we lost here to Manchester United and they won, then we were finishing 7th. But even so, when we dropped into the Europa Conference League, or we stayed in the Europa League. I just wanted European football good as some part of next season. We've got it. Housery at the Emirates, but you know what? We'll take it. I will take it as well. I was not prepared to do what I did against Man City and lose that game to death or against Manchester United in the Carabao Cup final. No, I thought, you know what? Take it however you can, mate. Take it however you can. I did not want to go into the final day possibly needing a result against Manchester United. Because after we lost to them in the EFL Cup final, I'll be totally honest here. The Gunners had Watford at home on the final day. That was a banker. Chelsea away at St Mary's. Newcastle at home to Leicester. All of those guys were going to win. I was sure of it. So we would need a, need a result here. Had we not got a point at the Emirates, we would need a result here against Manchester United. So that's why I was a bit housery in that following game there. Because I didn't want to go into the final day, possibly needing a point against a side that broke our hearts in the Carabao Cup final. And it's a really good decision as well, because in this game, Eric Ten Hag's side, far better. I mean, honestly, just far, far better. And even though we lost the Carabao Cup final with basically the final kick of extra time, you know, in the end of the day, like, they were just a far better team over the course of 90 minutes, let alone 120. So, you know, heading into the, the game here, I knew it was going to be a tough one. And I was under pressure throughout the entire game. The Red Devils had the lead, but we did get a goal against the run of play. He scored in the Carabao Cup final. He ended his goal drought here. Deli Ali plays a 1-2 of the woodwork and turns in the rebound. In the end, we do end the season on the back of no losses in our last five games with a 1-1 draw here at Manchester United. But... Even, even so, oh, six games, sorry, but even so, that was, a, that was a tough one there. But I'm glad to know that it didn't really matter whether we lost or drew. But in the end, as you'll see, the draw was vital. Had we not claimed that point through Delhi Alley, we would have dropped into the Europa Conference League and finished seventh. In the end, Alley's equaliser ensures we finish in sixth place and keep the Magpies at bay on goal difference. So, final league table, Liverpool champions, top four Spurs, Manchester City, Manchester United, Chelsea in fifth, us behind, uh, us behind them on goal difference, and us ahead of Newcastle on goal difference. All three teams there, fifth, sixth, and seventh, on goal difference separated. That's crazy tight, but exactly what we expected with how the season went. The Gunners, in the end, did finish in eighth place, but more on this in a moment. And the bottom three in the end, how about this? Norwich, Southampton, and Watford go down. Fulham, what a survival. They conceded 74 goals in the season, only had five wins all year long. They pulled out of the bag. They pulled it out of the bag to stay up, despite the fact I thought they were going for a rebuild in January. Fair play. Mo Salah equaled his goal-scoring record with 33 to win the Golden Boot. DCL, my top scorer, was also the top assist maker in the whole Premier League this year with 15 as he won the assist title and Jordan Pickford behind De Gea in the race for the Golden Glove this year. So, Everton finish in 6th place as Manchester United won the Carabao Cup, as we knew. How about this for the FA Cup last eight, by the way? Wickham, Birmingham, Salford City going to Wembley. But eventually, they would lose to the eventual winners at Chelsea. But how about this? Europa Conference League, the winners of this competition were... Well, you knew it was going to be. I sort of spoiled it a moment ago there. Arsenal. Arsenal. So, what does that mean? 
Now, Arsenal finished in eighth. So that means that, you know, if they didn't win the Europa Conference League, they, they wouldn't be in Euro next season, as you'll see here in the Europa League. Uh, AC Milan won an all-Italian affair against Lazio, and you'll see the Champions League in just a moment's time as well. Um, now, Arsenal finished in eighth place. Now, ordinarily, again, that doesn't mean you qualify for Europe, but if you win the Europa Conference League, you qualify for next year's Europa League. And subsequently, if you win the Europa League, you qualify for next year's Champions League, which was won by Liverpool, beating Man City in a final as they completed a league and European double. I don't know what this means for Everton. Now, here's, here's my thinking on this. Now, we finished in sixth place, right? Now, we were ahead of Newcastle in seventh. Now, Chelsea uh, finished fifth. Firstly, they won the FA Cup, which is a qualifier for the Europa League anyway, but also they finished in fifth. That's a lock. Chelsea are in the Europa League next year for sure. No one's going to take that away from them. But us and Newcastle, sixth and seventh, so I run you full this through the full squad here. I think that we still qualify for the Europa League anyway because we finished ahead of Newcastle, but it just means that Arsenal go into the Europa League alongside us and Chelsea. So there'll be three English teams in the Europa League and Newcastle keep their Europa Conference League spot. The only alternative I'm thinking is that a point, uh, sorry, a place gets dropped. So maybe if you can't have three English teams in the Europa League uh, to start with in the, uh, in the group stage, then maybe Arsenal and Chelsea go in the Europa League we drop to the Europa Conference League and take Newcastle's place, and Newcastle either also play Europa Conference League or miss out one of the two. I'm not sure. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm really not sure. I find it so hard to keep up to date with a new qualification for European competition, uh, rules and, uh, and, and ways to do it. It's so hard. It's, it's changed so much since I was a kid. But if, if you know what's going to happen here, please do let me know. Now, I'm 99% I'm certain we should definitely be in Europe regardless. But I'm just a little bit worried about Arsenal winning that Europa Conference League. If you win Europa Conference League, you qualify for next year's Europa League. Can you have three teams from the very beginning for, from the same nation? I don't know. I don't actually know. So we might be in Europa Conference League next year. We might be in the Europa League. I'm sure we'll be in Europe of some kind. But we're going to find out together when the new season begins. Even so, as I run you through the squad, I've got to say, man, I say DCL player of the year this year, top scorer and top assist maker as well. But what a comeback from Dele Alli. Gallagher and hudson Doy, fantastic new signs. Eric Dyer was, uh, was a great pickup from Spurs as well. A great season for Everton. And whilst it does say we failed both of our objectives, finishing the Europa League spot, it annoys me that the game doesn't count sixth, even though it is a Europa League spot. They only ever count fifth, but sixth is a spot. And we also got humiliated in the FA Cup. I still call that a good season, even if the board don't. A domestic cup final where we were, you know, 15 minutes away from winning it. Sixth place, European football back at Goodison Park. Yeah, forget the FA Cup. To me, that's a good season, regardless of what the board say. But thank you for watching the season and the season finale, guys. I really hope you enjoyed it. Much love to you. you. Have a fantastic day. Again, if you understand the European qualification rules and what's going to happen for next season, please do let me know so I'm prepared for it and I know what competition we'll be playing, Europa or Europa Conference League. But have a great day. Much love. And I'll see you for the brand new season where Everton will be playing European football of some kind very soon.